Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Jurgen Stark. I'm the CEO of Turtle Beach, and I'm happy to be presenting to you today with, with my colleague, Andrew Young. He's actually in uh, Wales at the moment. Couldn't make it out here, but he's going to be, he's the, the lead designer and engineer behind this, and he's going to be giving you guys some of the details about Velocity One uh, by video, by pre-recorded video. So happy to be here. I'm going to introduce the, the company and then myself, uh, and then jump into with Andrew some of the details about our new flight sim product. So let me first introduce the company. So um, how many people have ever heard of Turtle Beach? Oh, good. All right. Um, let's go here. So uh, we've been the leading, uh, you know, the, the way most of you probably know us, we've been the leader in gaming headsets for more than a decade. And this thing seems to want to jump ahead here. Um, for more than a decade, Xbox, PlayStation headsets. Uh, and, uh, you know, many people know the brand from that. That may make it a little strange about how we got into flight sim, so that's something I'm going to tell you about here. Um, we bought a company, a German company called Rocket, a couple of years ago that makes PC gaming keyboards and mice. So we're now also in, in PC gaming keyboards, mice, and headsets under the Rocket brand. And we also recently bought a company that does microphones. How many of you guys are streamers, just to get a feel? All right, so uh, streaming, gaming, obviously highly... Uh, complementary to each other, and we have a line of streaming mics coming up as well under our Neat brand. So Velocity One Flight is going to be the main topic today. Oops. Let me uh, introduce myself first. So I'm a pilot. Uh, I got a pilot's license in 2012. How many of you are pilots? Okay, excellent. Um, uh, trained on Cirrus SR20 and an SR22 and uh, got an instrument rating as well. And that got me started in flight simulation. So when I was, uh, after I got my pilot's license, Cirrus is a pretty advanced plane, as, as some of you guys may know, and uh, getting all the navigation and, and, and all the, the flight controls uh, and the programming right. Um, so I bought a, uh, a setup from Fly This Sim, and you can see it there. Um, pay attention to the young man in the corner there, he's going to show up in a couple of years looking much, much older. Um, and uh, that was a cool setup. It had uh, Cirrus SR20, SR22. It had a touch screen, but it worked quite well, actually, to put the actual instrumentation of the plane on the touch screens and had a big advantage that I could also try different planes. Uh, you can put a Cessna up. It had, it had a bunch of different kind of planes. And so in addition to enjoying practicing and training uh, on the Cirrus, I could also experiment with different planes. One of the big advantages, too, was it's FAA certified back then, so, so I could uh, use it partially to do instrument currency and all that. And I thought that was hugely valuable because instead of doing the same circuit around San Diego and the same approaches over and over and over again, I could actually uh, do really hard stuff or approaches that are far away, minimums, all that on the flight sim. So uh, I upgraded it pretty quickly to uh, the, the bigger setup with, with uh, uh, bigger screens, 360-inch 1080p monitors. Uh, and I kind of got into the flight sim stuff separate from pilot, uh, piloting. I like pilot, you know, like flying around and having a pilot's license, but I really started to enjoy flight simulation just as its own independent hobby. So that set me off over the course of multiple years to... Um, uh, upgrading my setup over and over again. I bought Fly This Sims helicopter software and the cockpit for the helicopter and then ended up, uh, I wanted my setup to be fully convertible from airplane to helicopter and back. And so I ended up building my own setup with, with screens that go up and down automatically. Helicopters gotta be low, planes gotta be higher. And, and just kept, kept at it basically, upgrading the simulator over time. Um, that's the helicopter. That's the same young man, by the way, now with a beard a few years later, uh, flying helicopter. And um, kept upgrading it, kept upgrading it. Uh, I added the uh, Ortho 4XP uh, graphics, you know, over the course of time. So the hardware of 12 terabytes of graphics data. I was also very into trying to have the setup be as, as realistic as possible, to have it look as realistic when I'm flying around, very relevant to where we're going with the story here. 
Um, early 2020, I bought uh, the flight sim cockpit, the hardware from Noble Flight Simulation. Pretty cool. One of the big advantages is it works with uh, Microsoft 2020. So, uh, and then last year, late last year, took a couple months, built a, a new PC with, with very high-end components. It took me months to get them, as any of you guys have been building, uh, building your own PCs know, not that easy. And uh, uh, just this year, bought recently the real Sim Gear uh, Cirrus cockpit, and this is now uh, the fly this Sim stuff. Frankly, it's old. The company's gone out of business, uh, and uh, only runs on X Plane 10.5. This um, this setup now is also BATD certified, so I can log approaches and time, and it it is has the full Cirrus cockpit. And one of the coolest things is if you can see in the lower left corner, the Cirrus flight stick is actually fully motorized. And so the, it, it does trim that feels perfect, feels exactly like the Cirrus, including when you put autopilot on, the stick will actually move by itself, just like the real thing. Uh, this combined with, with Pilot Edge doing ATC is, is, is you know 95% realistic to actually flying the Cirrus. It's really, really good practice. So uh, that's my background. Uh, you know, flight sim is, is its own separate hobby. And um, last year, January, so 2020, before all the COVID stuff hit, um, we obviously have a good relationship with Microsoft. We, we are one of the main uh, partners for them on the headsets, obviously, for Xbox. So I had heard that they had been working on flight sim 2020, a new flight simulation software I'm sure all of you guys are familiar with. We got a chance to go up and in January uh, got a demo of Microsoft Flight Sim. I was completely blown away. I had mentioned that I had been upgrading the graphics on X-Plane over time myself and all that. And this was just uh, a, a stunning leap in graphics and realism of, of the environment. And um, they also mentioned at the time that they were going to bring this to Xbox. And I thought, you know, at the time, people who want really good flight simulation typically are buying high-end PCs. They're, they're maybe customizing a lot of their own stuff. And for them to bring that level of flight simulation realism to a plug-and-play setup with Xbox would potentially cause the market to just explode with lots of new flight sim enthusiasts. Now it's plug-and-play. It's much easier. And I uh, got the demo, and on the way back, once I got back uh, after that, I happened to know the person who was the head of engineering for Mad Cats. Mad Cats bought Satech. You guys are probably familiar with the Satech flight sim, the yoke. They got bought by Logitech some years ago. And uh, by coincidence, happened to know the head of engineering that did the Satech products, that did the yoke, the throttle quadrant, all that, the stuff that I had set up also in part of my configurations at home and uh, gave him a call and said, hey, I want to do flight sim. I want to, the stuff that I, the stuff that I use, it's good, but it's old. It's in dire need of an upgrade, a Satech yoke and stuff like that. And uh, I, think, I think with your expertise, uh, we can do a much, much better newer flight sim hardware. And I want it to work on the Xbox so that it opens up that whole new market. Um, and I'll give you a budget. You can hire some of your former team members. You can build a team, Skunk Works. You don't have to be kind of in the middle of, we're, we're roughly a $400 million company, Turtle Beach. You don't have, you can just do this kind of off to the side on yourself like a little startup. Um, but I want a product that's ready to go for holiday 2021. So he, he agreed, came on board, hired uh, a team. He's got deep expertise. Andrew, so literally been doing flight sim stuff for 20 years. He's the guy who designed and engineered the Satech yokes and throttle quadrants that probably many of you guys use. And uh, we were off to the races. So that's kind of the backstory of, of why, uh, you know, how Turtle Beach got into flight simulation. Um, and, you know, a really important point is uh, we're not a headset engineering company that decided to use those engineers to do flight simulation. I'm, I'm a huge believer that if you want to do good hardware, you got to have people that have expertise in doing that hardware. And this, this team is, is arguably one of the best teams in the world, most, most experienced teams in the world at doing exactly this kind of product because they've been doing it for a long time. 
So with that, thank you again Andrew. and the, um, the team um, in, in San Diego at the flight show. Um, hello and welcome. I'm, um, I'm Andrew Young. I'm one small part of a very talented team who've basically been working on Velocity One for quite a while now, and, and we're the team which has sort of um, worked with, um, with Jürgen and the guys and made this a reality. So hope everyone is having a great time at the show. I really wish we could have been there, but you know, as, as you all know, it's been a little bit difficult in terms of um, on travel right now. Um, I'm actually based in Wales at the moment, and as usual, it's raining, so happy days. Um, today, I wanted to spend uh, a short time giving you, you know, some background in terms of how and why and who's involved in the, um, the Velocity One flight initiative. Uh, this has been in, the, in planning for a very, very long time. Um, we're extremely excited to be launching this this, this new project with, um, with Turtle Beach. I mean, the support, expertise, and encouragement has been immense. Um, so, see as we only have a short time, um, let's go. Okay, so um, just a little bit about my background, um, and I'll, I'll only spend a very short time on this. My, my background, I started as a sort of electromechanical design engineer in, in the aerospace and, and the industrial and defence sectors. Um, so, so my training is around sort of systems engineering. Um, I've you know worked on various sort of um, control systems for um, some of the key brands you can see on the slide here. So, um, I mean, you can call things like the um, the Tornado aircraft right through to sort of like a commercial uh, Fokker or, or Dornier 328. So um, yeah, so that's a little bit about sort of um, my background. I do want to spend too long on that. Okay. Okay, so after around about 10 years uh, working in, in, in that industry, um, I joined a company, which I'm sure you guys can work out um, who it is. I mean, um, I was one of the first guys in um, and we were essentially a startup looking at sort of um, PC simulation products. Um, and as you can see by the the images, I mean, you can work it out for yourself in terms of some of the work we did. And, and part of like my role was, was to build a team um, to actually, you know, build a brand within that industry. You can see there's a little bit of a nostalgia but the bottom left, if you see the image there, that was the first concept rendering um, of basically um, the cyborg joystick. Um, and you know, if you look at the little sort of um, image there, you can see it was sort of March '97 when that concept came out, and Cyborg um, went on with you know um, to, to sell well over a sort of um, a million units and brought some really new sort of um, innovations to the um, the PC simulation industry. Okay, so after the launch of the uh, the X36, as, as you can see for yourselves on the, on the previous slide, and uh, a few other sort of innovations, we, as you can see here, we, we, we've been working in joysticks. And I say we because you know, part of the core team which are working on Velocity One have worked on these joysticks and, and we work together as, as a core team for a very long time. Um, you know, as you can see there, we've, we've, <laughs> we've launched um, quite a few projects in this space. So these are some of more of the like, like co commercial um, innovations we did. Um, but as, as you can see, sort of joysticks flight simulation um, is basically in our DNA. Um, you can see there, this, this is a very small image of the, um, I don't know if you guys can remember the Aviator, um, which was um, quite a successful product um, at the time. I think it was launched around with the sort of the, uh, the Damage Inc sort of franchise. Uh, anyway, I can, I can, t I can Go on and tell lots of stories about the various sort of you know joysticks and, and what we did and 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 um, how we developed them. But anyway, let's um, let's move on. Okay, so um, on this slide, what you sh should be able to see and recognise is quite a, a broad range of um, of simulation peripherals, which the team or the core team who's worked on Velocity One have actually been involved. In, in the development of these products. Um, so essentially, I think what that does, that, that, that shows you the sort of the, the level of capability within Turtle Beach and, and in terms of you know, what we're doing with, with the brand and, and the products. Um, and as you can see there, there's essentially anything from sort of a, you know, a combat style hotess right through to um, products for, for Cessna, Cessna 152, 72 light aircraft, and, and even the full sort of um, simulation experience, even uh, some, some spin-off projects around uh, farming simulation, as you can see the top right image there. So uh, I, th I think we just wanted to show that, you know, that these are some of the things 
you know we've worked on in the past and and on on that i'd like to to hand you back to to jürgen um, and the team live at the show so that's Andrew. He's going to talk about the technical details of the product in a couple of minutes. But let me tell you kind of the charter that, that I asked them to, to execute on. Um, wanted a very good yoke, good feel, uh, no grease. I can't tell you how many times I've picked up my, my Satec yoke by the, by the axle and got stuff all over my hands. Um, and uh, a throttle quadrant and then experience that both could appeal to hardcore simmers. So, you know, big iron, programmability, all the kind of controls that you need, and, but also give people new flight sim enthusiasts or people who on the Xbox might just want to jump in a Cessna and fly around, a very good realistic Cessna experience. Some of my son's friends are new pilots, and, you know, they're all training on a Cessna. And so the part of the charter here was I want the product to do both. That means we need vernier, vernier throttles and a trim wheel. So this is one of the first products, or if not the only product, that actually has both levers, like you use in a, in a uh, bigger airplanes or in the Cirrus, but also the vernier throttles and, uh, and a trim wheel. And we ought to make it all in one. So that, that means don't force people to buy even rudder pedals if they just want to buy this so you have the ability to control the rudder on the back of the yoke. All in one, uh, and uh, we want it for a reasonable price. One of the big advantages of Turtle Beach, we're nearly a $400 million company, is Andrew and the team could do the design, the engineering, all the things that they're good at, but our core operations and supply chain team could make sure that uh, when we delivered the product, it would be the highest quality, at a, at a reasonable price. So this is 379, and that's driven by the fact that we have a very good supply chain team that buys millions of components from many suppliers, and we're able to get good pricing, and, and as well as just get the stuff here, uh, procure semiconductors, all the things you have to do, which some of which uh, are uh, more complicated than normal right now, uh, and and deliver a really high quality product for for 379 dollars. So that was the charter. Uh, that's my setup at home, lots of testing on, uh, on the V1, and I'll turn it back over to Andrew. Thanks, Jürgen, and the team. Uh, it's me again. Hi. <laughs> uh, what we wanted to talk about in this section was the specifics around Velocity One Flight and just, just some insights into uh, some of the decisions we made around the product, um, why We've, we've, we've made certain decisions and the process to involve and essentially um, what's, what's coming next. So, so um, let's, let's, let's move on. Okay, so, well, what this slide shows and apologies for, for the formula. What we wanted to do is have some simple visual way of encapsulating and, and uh, actually demonstrate the sort of the teamwork that has gone into Velocity One as a, as a product. Um, and it's basically, as you can see there for, for yourself, it's been um, a culmination of real sort of support from, from, from enthusiasts in the industry and, and professional simmers right through to, you know, working with the precision, you know, engineering and the core team and actually the experience of the core team. So, uh, and, and, and having worked in simulation for, for quite a long time, you know, we, we sort of understand the, the nuances around, you know, control sets, ergonomics and, you know, working with the pro pilot environment and getting that feedback. What we believe we, we've come up with is, is 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 a product which meets the requirements for the for the simulation community and and hopefully this sort of um, very simple form encapsulates that. Okay, so what this illustrates is is our development blueprint. So when we started this journey, we had a, a number of core requirements. And I think that this is quite important because ultimately it's all about you know, setting the sort of um, the mission and the values and the strategy around what we're trying to achieve. And, and I think aligning that with some core franchises and what's going on with those franchises is, is uh, very exciting uh, for us as a team. So. 
in terms of what we're trying to achieve, we wanted something which which, which was universal, so, so something which could uh, add realism, you know, because realism, realism is, is so important, but actually fit a, a wide genre of, of aircraft types. The other sort of um, issues we're looking at is, is, is modular and upgradable. We want something which is future proof. We want something where, you know, if, if someone tries the velocity one flight, they can think, well, you know, I, I really like this experience. I want to sort of build around that. So, so, so this is very much the start of a journey for us. Um, and I think this, this, this again, aligns ourselves with, with what we're trying to do as a, as a on, on the platform, basically. Um, accessibility was also important. Um, all along, I mean, from, from day one of this initiative, we've always set the goal of uh, we need to get people who are using the, the product, you know, up in the air straight out of the box. And that, that's, that's, again, that sounds like something which is very easy to say. Um, but actually, technically, to achieve that in terms of you know the hardware and the software and the infrastructure is 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 um, quite a challenge. But it's something we've we've been you know intensely focused on as a as a team. And and, and with that, what we try to do is is bring in um, training modes, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more on some of the other slides. Um, we, we've looked at sort of loading. Um, hardwired profiles and, and working with the, uh, the franchise to make sure that you know all the aircraft types are covered and actually looking at sort of um, configuration updates through the app as well. So and while we're trying to make that experience as seamless as possible, which has been an interesting challenge because because we're looking at the, you know the Xbox platform and the PC platform. So. Um, the challenge is, is is not alienating the sort of the um, the PC simulation expert and you know being accessible to, to someone who really wants to get into simulation. So so um, having a layer which is intuitive as well is, is is also key. I mean, hopefully the other slides we've shared with you demonstrates our capability to deliver something which is. Uh, reliable because reliability is so important. Um, you know, as you know, I mean, with these products, there's lots of dynamic, dynamic moving parts, um, and, and there's lots of sort of um, nuances around. You know, getting the feel right, the precision right for the product, and we also wanted a brand we could actually give us the world class support. You know, the development and the sales and distribution as well, because we do believe. the Simulation customer is is key to the success, and we're on this journey with you, basically. What we wanted to illustrate here was basically, and, and these are just little snippets of the development journey. Uh, the key thing we want to get across is, is we spend a lot of time reviewing, researching cockpits, control sets, ergonomics, and all the attributes required to deliver a product which was, which would be universally accepted within the community. Um, and as you can see, there's, there's a number of sketches and images here. Some are quite rough, um, but essentially that's how we worked. And we worked on images, sketches, you know, through teams, through calls, through exchange of you know hardware, fine tuning the ergonomics, making sure the construct control set was right. Um, but I think what, what hopefully what this you know encapsulates is that this was very much sort of a, a team effort. Um, and, and essentially, you know, we, we, we just hope you guys, what we wanted to get across was, was there's, there's quite a lot of in, intense sort of um, engineering work going on in the background um, to deliver the product, essentially. We wanted to share a few um, innovations with, with the guys at the show. Um, this is only a very small sort of a snippet of some of the things we've been working on in the background um, to make sure that Velocity One is, you know, meets, meets the needs of, of um, the platform and, and the community. Uh, we've spent a lot of time um, through through an iterative process involving the design, um, and I think you know we have a saying where like simplicity is difficult, uh, and, and that's very much apparent with the product. We spend a lot of time designing things, simplifying them, making sure they meet the requirements for the product, and, and some of the areas we've been working on are things like sort of um, you know really sort of precision mach machined low coefficient friction bearings, you know uh, precision shafts making sure that, that they meet the requirements for precision flying and, and you know we understand through our experience that 
it's key that, 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 that you know the um, the response is smooth and it's linear um, and it's reliable. Um, so I mean, so, so we've looked at uh, mechanisms around that. So when you look at sensing and return to center mechanisms, we're making sure that we're using sort of you know high grade. Um, spring center return mechanisms, position linear slides, and and there's there's a positive response. And in terms of you know how the product senses, I mean whole effect sensing where it matters because whole effect is non-contacting, it's it's highly reliable and and optical encoders in core areas. You know as you guys know, I mean this product has. 12 axis so it is very important that we pick the right mechanisms and and, and 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 the right levels of due diligence and testing on the product to make sure the engineer response and the engineering product is or the final engineering product is um, to the right levels of quality for the market um, other innovations just just very briefly we've, we've looked at like stands and, and, and attachments and how you mount the product um, one of the things we, we wanted to do with the product is make sure the the uh, the mounting system was 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 it was as encapsulated into the product as possible there's nothing worse than cracking your knee on a sort of a screw clamp or a bracket or a g clamp so we wanted something which sat on your desk was very slim line um, and, but, but, but there are also a number of options as well. There are sort of mounting options on the underside if someone wants to mount it to their rig. Um, and we're, we're also using some sort of um, nanotape based solutions if someone wants to just mount it and hold it solidly to their desk um, as well um, on a temporary basis. We also wanted to build in, uh, as we mentioned in the earlier slides, I mean, modularity. So, so if someone's got a flight setup where they want to split the quadrant off uh, and set it somewhere else, you can do that as well. Um, and, and essentially, the, the, there are some other innovations which I'm going to talk about um, in a short moment. But I think, you know, adding things like you know, an integrated screen, um, and I'm going to talk about the screen in a minute, um, is, is, is key to sort of building that, you know, all encompassing experience for the product. So, so, yeah, I mean, essentially, these are just a few innovations we've worked on, and there, there are a lot more we can share um, over time. And if I had more time, we won't spend too long on this, but we felt it was it was quite sort of important that we get across to the sort of the community um, and the industry around simulation the the level of sort of attention we we put into the quality and the integrity um, of the product. I mean, as a, as you can see there, um, it's it's been through um, quite a lot of diligent testing, and and I think this this. There's a key nuance, and, and this, this is taken from the aerospace industry. Um, some people test the spec, so you know uh, an axis has to meet a million cycles. We don't just test the spec; we test the destruction. So, so what that allows us to do is we know where the sort of um, the points of failure are in the product and how we improve them. And I think that's a small nuance, but, but what it does, it, it makes us sort of have that. It gives us that feedback loop where we can actually improve the product quality over time, and it actually gives us a safety factor as well, which was it, which is actually if you're in a real aircraft. One of the key elements is, is, is playing out your sort of your safety factor or on anything you do in terms of um, engineering, uh, reliability testing. So, so um, you know, as you can see, there's a few, only a few snapshots there just to sort of um, for you guys to peruse. But um, we felt that was important to share. Okay, onto the um, the flight management display or the the FMD as we call it. What we wanted to do was was spend some time talking around why we selected the screen and, and what are the benefits of the screen. Um, we had a lot of debate around this, to be fair, um, but as you can see, the consensus was we felt that the screen was the right thing to do. So, so what I wanted to do is talk you through some of the core functions of, of the screen, essentially. So um, what it does, you have a number of modes within the screen. You have profile, and um, what, what the profile mode does is, is essentially it allows you to, to load various profiles based on your aircraft type and configure the hardware in relation to the software. So, for example, if you're flying a 152, you can scroll down, you can select I'm flying a 152, and it will set up the hardware for, for a basic configuration for a 152 aircraft, you know, like nuances around the, you know, the TPM system, etc. As, as you guys know, I'm, I'm sure. And, and then over time, we will load more profiles for, for more planes. Um, within the um, within the platform so so we felt that was like something which 
is useful for, 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 for the platform and the hardware and, and just sort of gets over that you know, hump of, of, of actually you know, having to sort of go into the, the programming interface all the time and, and, and customize everything. Um, so we felt that was a, an important feature. I mean, training for us was all about mitigating the, um, uh, the learning curve, essentially. Uh, we did a lot of beta testing with the product. We did beta testing with pro pilots and pro simmers. And we also did some, some beta testing with people who've never played the platform before. And, and one of the, the core things we noticed with, with, with that latter group was that when, when you sit them down in front of the product, they're like, well, <laughs> well, well, what do I do? What do I touch? You know, um, how does this work? And so what we did was built in a training mode. So essentially, if you're in training mode, you can select any access or button and what it does, it, it, it shows you and tells you what that button does within the software and the hardware. So hopefully that sort of a mitigates, mitigates, sorry, mitigates the, the barrier to entry for the product. Um, we have things like chronometer, which, which um, are pretty standard, but I think, again, useful feature for, for, for pro simmers. And, and we have a settings mode. What, what you do within the settings, you can change you know, your, your screen brightness, you can change um, the colors of the product. So as, as you know, the product has quite a, a lot of um, RGB LEDs on it and, and, and backlights and backlight buttons. You can actually change all, all those. And, and essentially there's, there's something else which we're working on, which I'm gonna talk about in the next slide is, is something called a SIP, which is basically a status indicator panel and what the screen will do that will allow you to customize the status indicator panel. Um, oh yeah, and, and there's one more thing I missed with, on, on the screen, it, it, what it allows you to do, because we felt it was very important that in terms of um, future proof of the, f the product being future proof is that you know the, the whole um, product upgrade process is as simple as possible so, so if, if you go in um, download the windows app essentially um, we have a windows app so if you plug in the product it'll, it'll recognize the product and it'll actually update the firmware so so as we come up with new exciting upgrades to the product and functionality i mean you're always using the latest greatest providing you a you're checking your sort of um, your firmware updates, so, so we felt that was important as well. Okay, so this is the the status indicator panel, or all the SIP as we call it, for short. Because we have like fully integrated RGB lighting on the product, what we wanted to do was 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 give real real time alerts within the hardware related to the software. Uh, and and what we're doing with, with integration within the game is is that basically. Um, at launch, it'll, it'll come with sort of standard SIP interface, as, as you can see within the illustration here, which, which are core functions within um, a generic aircraft. Uh, but what you can do over time is basically it comes with a blank status indicator panel as well and, and a range of uh, decals. So what you can do, you can actually, through the interface, you can program uh, your warning lights and your, and your status indicators um, for your own, you know, personal customization or setup. So this is something we're offering the the, the consumer over time. Um, and and uh, you know, as we said at launch, it'll come with a sort of standard in interface and one or two options. And then over time, you'll be able to customize your experience. Okay, so what's in the box? As you can see, there's, there's, there's a number of elements we've included within the Velocity One Flight package to ensure that we're as universal as, as we can be at launch. Uh, we will be supporting the, um, the product and the platform with future upgrades, which I'm gonna talk about a, a little bit in a minute, but, but what this does is it allows you to get flying straight out of the box. And if you do have sort of um, requirements for customization, we've tried to, to meet those needs as well. So as you can see there, I mean, we have a, three ways of, of mounting the product. Uh, we have a number of sort of um, decals around customization around the SIP, which we just discussed, uh, and, 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 and the button array as well. So, so you can customize to your heart's content. We've got a number of levers uh, for various options as well. I mean, light aircraft, 152, you know, um, heavy jet or twin engine jet as well. So. Um, hopefully there's, there's, there's enough at launch to actually um, make you guys happy with your purchase. A basic summary of what we've just discussed and what's next for the Velocity One Flight and what other things we're working on. So, so essentially, um, I hope 
the presentation has, has given you a few insights in, in, in terms of you know the team, you know, the effort we put in, our commitment to the platform and the product, um, and, and what we also wanted wanted to get across was, you know, we're not a one product wonder company. I mean, we're, we're working on this. We're working on a number of we have a number of products in development right now, which we'll be announcing quite soon. Um, and we're building out a range of products to meet the needs of the of the community, um, the software and, and 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 the platform basically. So, so so, what's next for Velocity One Flight? I mean, as we've discussed, there's going to be some custom profiles coming along uh, for the the status indicator panel and and actually configuring the hardware for specific aircraft. We have obviously a website around sort of Velocity One Flight, and over time, we'll be building out that website. So, so it includes things like new product announcements, you know, notifications, exclusive downloadable content, software, accessories, hardware, and just a general area where you can give us feedback in terms of the hardware, you know, your ideas around what we should be doing next. You know, we're very cognizant of the fact that, 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 that you ha we have to be very close to you guys. I mean. You're the ones passionate about this. We're passionate about this. And I think exchange between the, sim the simulation community and, and, and you know, what we're doing in terms of development is, is a strong partnership, which, which should deliver success. So on that note, um, I'd like to hand you over back to the team. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of your show. Wish I was there. All right. So uh, hope glad you guys we're uh, sitting through that. Obviously, it would have been better to have Andrew here, but hopefully that gives you a good idea of the product. I think the team's done a phenomenal job designing an all-in-one uh, modern piece of hardware. Um, as Andrew mentioned, you know, they're, 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 hardware has a lot more capability right now than Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 can support. So one of the things we're working on is, is making sure that everything works correctly with Flight Sim 2020. We're kind of blazing the trail here with Microsoft. Uh, you're probably all wondering when this is coming. It, it'll be uh, arriving before holiday, maybe well before holiday. That's our goal. Uh, 379, and as Andrew mentioned, the product will get upgrades over time as Microsoft Flight Sim allows more, more integration in terms of status indicators, programmability, all of that. And uh, we're working on a number of additional products to add on as well. This is now a, a, a new small team within Turtle Beach that's going to continue to do what they're doing. And I think they've done a great job. And I, I think the community is really going to appreciate the hard work that went into this product.